All right, let's next look at entropy change of an ideal gas. So this is going to be the first portion of that material. So the facts that we're going to need here are that the ideal gas law will apply if I have an ideal gas, so PV equals RT. Also that I can say DU is CV DT, the little subscript 0 there additionally indicating that it's for an ideal gas, just a reminder. And DH is CP DT, again that subscript 0 to indicate that it's for an ideal gas. So if I take these and substitute them into the equation for DS, so first let's look at the one with DU. So DU over T plus P over T dV is CV dT over T. And then I can use the ideal gas law to solve for P over T, which is R over V. Now this portion is not going to be integrable necessarily. I need to know more about CV. But this R is always a constant, so therefore I can always integrate this chunk to be R times the natural log of V2 over V1. And the nice thing is here is I can use total volume or specific volume because if the mass is constant, those will simply uh, cancel out the mass will. Now what if I do this for the DH equation? So in that case, and that should say CP, I'll just change it on the fly here, DH is CP dT. And V over T is R over P dP, and so I end up with this expression. So again, this part is always integrable, but this part needs a little bit more work. So let's look at different ways I might do that. And first, let's consider constant specific heats. So if the C sub V is constant, then I'm going to be able to integrate that as just the natural log of T2 over T1, or this as the natural log of T2 over T1. And so I end up with these approximations for constant C sub P or C sub V. If that's the case, then that's going to be pretty easy. Well, what about if it's not the case? Well, I in that case would hope that I would have tables. If I have tables, they've already done the integration. But you'll recall that the ideal gas tables only have temperature values. So they only do the temperature portion of the integration. So you're going to see S naught for this, and it's only the temperature portion. It's this part. So when we read numbers out of the tables, we must do our own pressure calculations. So we will read out of the tables the ST not at temperature 2 and temperature 1, subtract those, and then we will subtract off R. So for air, it would be 0 0.287 kilojoule kil per kilogram Kelvin, times the natural log of the final pressure over the initial pressure. So let's look at an example. So I have a mass of half a kilogram of air at 100 kilopascals, 300 Kelvin. And I want to heat it at constant volume until T2 is 500 Kelvin. And what I want to do is calculate the final pressure and the delta S. And I want to do this two ways. First, using the ideal gas tables. And second, using co the constant C sub P naught. So first, if we use the ideal gas tables, I'm going to look up the ST naught at T1 and T2. And then I'm going to subtract those two values. So this is easy because, hey, if I get to make up problems, I'm going to choose numbers in the table. At 300 Kelvin, I just look this up. No interpolation required. OK, so I subtract those two. And then I correct for the pressure, minus 0.2871. That's the R value in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, which is the same units as I have here. So be careful with your units times the natural log of the pressure at the end over the pressure at the beginning. OK. Uh, oh, I forgot to calculate the pressure, didn't I? OK. Uh, I should have put that in here. I'm going to use the ideal gas law. PV equals RT. PV over T is constant, therefore, from state 1 to state 2. Volume is also constant, so P 
over t at state 1 equals p over t at state 2. I can use that to solve for t, p2. Now what if I wanted to do this using constant c sub p? Well, <coughs> it's actually more of a pain in the neck in some respects. Uh, if I needed to use CV, when I look this up in many data books, I'm only going to find C sub P. So to get C sub V, I'm going to have to subtract R from C sub P and get a value of 0.7179. So C sub V times the ratio of the log, the log of the ratio of the temperatures plus 0.2871 times log of the ratio of the volumes. I chose to work with this though because the really nice thing is if you have a constant volume process, V2 over V1 is going to give me a log of 1 equals 0, which means I don't have to do the pressure correction. Think about this. If I do a constant pressure process, the minus R ln of P2 over P1 similarly would be 0. So that's going to be very helpful when I do these sorts of calculations to make the appropriate choice. And I get an answer 0.183. Before I had an answer 0.186. They're very close to each other, uh, mostly because I'm using uh, temperatures that are fairly cool, and so C sub P doesn't change all that much. So we're going to pause the video there, and we're going to come back and look at ideal gases a little bit more.